You have heard it said. But I say to you, or dot, dot, dot. What's it really mean? What's it really mean? Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, we hear lots of things. We read even more these days. But we don't always know what it truly means. Please help us to go to the source and to try and understand what is meant by your word and by others. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. The radio station this week had a great idea. They're going to try and market a font, not the baptismal kind, but the writing kind, for texting, for emails, for letters of correspondence, for the whole nine yards. And it's going to be a sarcasm font. That way, when we read the texts, or the notes, or the letters, or we get the messages on the desk from, from the spouse, because they've gone out, and it says, good for you. We know what they mean, good for you, or good for you. Because we don't. Sometimes even talking with people, we can tell that they aren't getting what we're saying. And if you've ever spoken with me, you've had that feeling too, haven't you? <laughs> the lights are on, but they're in the basement hiding, aren't they? <coughs> And we get that in scripture quite a bit. That's why our predecessors have always stressed the importance of studying this book and the stuff and the language and the way the words go together. Because more so than any other book, it can be really confusing. For instance, eye for an eye and a Tooth for a tooth. It's not just an eye, ear, nose, and throat guy. When you hear eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, what's your first reaction? Old Testament. Old Testament. What was it? Hammurabi. Hammurabi. Nice. Hammurabi's code. Gold star. What else? Revenge. Revenge. Woo. Did you know that that was set up to be kind? That eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth was said so that folks would stop at equal. If you took out my eye, I was to stop after I'd taken yours and not lay waste to you, your people, your town, your village, your sheep. If you knocked out my tooth, I had the right to even, to reciprocity. Revenge? Sort of, but not open-ended. And then on the other side of Christ, we hear, when you are slapped in the right cheek, turn them to your left. Isaac, come here, dude. You get to slap the pastor in church. <laughs> you won't even go to hell. It's awesome. First time ever. Now, in this culture, the hands mean something. Right hand, you can touch somebody else with. Left hand, you cannot. Left hand's used for other things. We'll get into that after church. Kids are here. Um, yeah. You can only use your right hand. Furthermore, parts of the hand mean different things. The front, or excuse me, the palm of the hand, this soft side is allowed to touch other people, whereas the back is dirty, is not. Cleanliness is a big thing. You know that, right? The ablutions and everything. So, you are, hi Isaac, and you're going to smack me with your right hand, gently, because I know where you live. It's okay, go ahead. So you smack my cheek. Now what happens when I offer the other? Smack my cheek. <laughs> you can't. Not as easily, can you? Why not? Because it's turned away. Unless he really wants to follow through with the insult and backhand or use his other hand, he can't do it. 
Good job, buddy. Go ahead. <laughs> Christ calls us to put the love to the test. When we turn our other cheek, it's not just a sign of giving them another chance. It's really putting their soul on the line for peace. Are they really that angry? Am I really that deserving? Are they willing to take the next step and break all social norms? Or... Are they just having a bad day? And through this one single act, I'm able to make peace and make them realize what they've done. See, that's the power of Christ's peace. It's not a nancy pamby wishy-washy, oh, let them do whatever they want and just love them. Christ's peace is strength. It is the peace of knowing what is right and standing in your convictions and making the other people do what they believe is wrong if they're really convicted. Christ's peace is the one that you saw in the Million Man March or in Martin Luther King, not Martin Luther, Luther. No, you saw it with him, too. Here I stand, I can do no other. And as I stand here, you are faced with the, or with the, the question, do you follow through with your threats? Or do you treat me as a child of Christ as I am treating you? We hear lots in the world. We hear things that other people say, and we automatically think the worst. We think they're sniping at us. We think they're angry with us. We think they're being sarcastic. And they might be! Heck, some of us deserve it. It's okay! But whether or not we deserve it never means that they deserve our anger. For that is what Christ is saying. Love others as you wish to be loved. Love them with the same measure that you give yourself to act by. Love them with the same accountability that you give to yourself to be accountable. Judge them with the same judgment that you place upon yourself. But when we do that, we not only show gospel and law, we show a second chance. And we show Christ in our lives and in theirs. Be strong. Turn the other cheek. Come next week, you might get to slap a pastor in church. And love with Christ's love. In his name, amen. And as your hips and legs let you, I invite you to please stand and join with me as we sing together hymn number 700.